Nyanga National Park lies in the north of Zimbabwe's eastern highlands. One of the first national parks to be declared in the country, it contains the highest land in Zimbabwe, with green hills and perennial rivers. Most of its terrain consists of rolling downland, sometimes lightly wooded, lying at altitudes between 1,800 to 2,593 meters (6,560 to 7,544 feet). Mount Nyangani, the highest point in Zimbabwe, lies in the center of the park, and Mutarazi Falls, Zimbabwe's highest waterfall, is in the south of the park. Nyanga National Park incorporates the former Mutarazi Falls National Park on its southern boundary. History of the park The national park is one of the oldest in Zimbabwe, established as Rhodes in Nyanga National Park, a bequest from Cecil Rhodes. The original park borders extended beyond Udu Dam, along the east bank of the Nyangombe River to the north of the current park boundary. This extension was sold in the 1970s, but the Warrendale section, immediately beyond Udu Dam, had been recovered by the early 1980s. The park nearly doubled in size with the late 1990s purchase of most of the Inyanga Block and Kwaraguza farms. These purchases expanded the national park to the north and east of Mount Nyangani, incorporating some important areas of montane rainforest, the source area of the Kairesi River and Nyama Falls. The designation and acquisition of Nyazengu Farm in 2000, previously an enclave within the park, completed the formal protection of Mount Nyangani and the headwaters of the Pungwe River, although Nyazengu had previously been operated as a private nature reserve. The current name Nyanga reflects the correct vernacular pronunciation of the area. Features <laughs> <laughs> Flora The vegetation of Nyanga is part of the eastern Zimbabwe montane forest grassland mosaic, within the montane grasslands and shrublands ecoregion. The rainforest is found mainly on the eastern leeward slopes, as well as in the steeper valleys on west-facing slopes. It is dominated by Syzygium woodlands of dwarf MSASA have developed on some westward-facing slopes. Copses of Mulanje cypress survive in areas that are safe from fire. Tree ferns are a very noticeable part of the Nyanga flora, with the common tree fern occurring on the moorlands and the forest tree fern in the rainforests. The Nyanga aloe, Aloe inyangensis, is found on higher ground. Black wattle, introduced into plantations outside the park, spread rapidly into several parts of the park. Pine, planted between roads and mare dams, also spread. By 1988 it was estimated that around 40% of the park had been invaded by these alien species. The park authorities maintain a continuous eradication program. Fauna <inaudible> 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 A wildlife checklist compiled over several years reveals a remarkable diversity of mammals, including occasional sightings of species such as buffalo and lion that stray into the region from the Mozambique lowlands. Visitors are likely to see kudu, reedbuck, clipspringer and several other antelope. Predators, including leopard and hyena, are also present. The African clawless otter is common in the upper Kairesi River, in the northeast of the park. The park is best known among wildlife conservationists for its populations of blue diker and samango monkeys. Neither animal is found outside the eastern highlands. The Inyangani River frog is an endangered amphibian found in rocky, fast flowing streams in the montane grassland. Lake Gulliver and the Mare, Udu, Purden, and Rhodes dams have been stocked with trout from hatcheries maintained by the Department of National Parks. The rainbow trout is most widespread within the park's dams and streams but brown trout and American brook trout are also present. Geography and geology The park is dominated by Mount Nyangani which lies in the center and is the highest mountain in Zimbabwe. The park is well watered by numerous streams and rivers. The central and eastern parts of the park form part of the Zambezi Basin. The Nyangombi River, whose tributaries include the Mare River and the Nyamuziwa River, and the Kairesi River both flow north out of the park, ultimately to join the Mazau River. 
The Pungwe River rises at the foot of Niangani and flows southwards through the park before dropping 787 feet 240 meters into the densely wooded Pungwe Gorge. The Mutarazi Falls, a few kilometers south of the Pungwe Gorge, have a 2,499-foot drop and are Zimbabwe's highest waterfall. They drop in two stages over granite cliffs into the Honda River Valley, which lies outside the park and is a major tea planting area. Five dams have been constructed for recreation and tourist water supply, Rhodes Dam and Mare Dam on the Mare River, Lake Gulliver and Purden Dams on tributaries of the Mare River and Udu Dam on a tributary of the Niangombi River. Most of Nianga National Park is underlain by granite. The highest mountains are composed of Umkondo Group dolerite and sandstone, with the harder dolerite forming cliffs and ridges and the granite dolerite contact often forming waterfalls. The Troutbeck dolerite sill, shown in the distance in the photograph of Quaraguza above, was dated at 1099 Ma. Topic: <laughs> Archaeological, historical, cultural sites. 15th to 17th century ruins of the Ziwa people, upland culture, have been found throughout Nianga. The ruins include homesteads, centered on pit structures thought to have been used as cattle pens and larger hilltop settlements, referred to as forts. The pit structures were once referred to as slave pits, but that interpretation has generally been not supported by archaeologists and is now discredited. There are three sites which can be readily accessed by tourists. Chawumara Fort is located above the Niangombi River, on a gravel road north of the park headquarters. In addition to the fort, there are several pit structures. Niangwe Fort, near Mare Dam, is the most extensive and best preserved ruin in the park. It is atop a small hill with good views over the Mare Valley. Near the park headquarters is a reconstructed pit structure. The homestead around a pit structure has been rebuilt and a site museum established. Several other sites have spectacular locations, such as the fort which overlooks the confluence of the Niangombi and Niamziwa rivers and a small fort on top of a hill just west of Mount Niangani. However these two sites are not easily accessible, associated with the ruins are extensive agricultural terracing and irrigation furrows. Iron extraction was practiced, mainly to support the complex agricultural technology. The core areas of the park were once the private estate of Cecil Rhodes. He acquired it with the aim of growing apples and raising sheep, and spent the last years of his life at his homestead near Rhodes Dam. This homestead is now the Rhodes Museum and Rhodes Nyonga Hotel. Topic. Accommodation and camping Topic. Rest camps There are three large rest camps in Nyonga National Park, all of which consist of fully equipped, self-catering lodges. Rhodes Dam, which is also the park headquarters, is located near the main entrance in a pine forest. Mare Dam is some 8 km east of Rhodes, in the center of the park and close to three trout fishing dams and Niangwe Fort. Udu Dam is in the northwest of the park, on the road to Niangombi Falls. There are also two lodges at the Pungwe Drift, currently leased to a private operator, one located on each side of the Pungwe River, upstream of the Pungwe Falls. There used to be an isolated chalet at Nyamuziwa Falls, but this was closed in the 1970s. Topic. Camping sites There is also a camping ground and caravan park on the Mare River half a kilometre west of Rhodes Dam, and a second camping ground at Mutarazi Falls. The larger Niangombi camping ground, on the main highway from Mutare to Nianga town was closed in the late 1990s. Topic. Privately owned camps and sites There are two private facilities within the park, Rhodes Hotel, on the south bank of Rhodes Dam, incorporating Cecil Rhodes Old Homestead, and the Mountain Club of Zimbabwe Hut, on the Quaraguza Road from Mount Niangani to Troutbeck. <laughs> Places of interest <laughs> Central and western area 
This is the most developed part of the park, stretching from the park headquarters at Rhodes Dam to Mount Niangani. The area includes the three rest camps and the five dams. Places of interest which are accessible on dust roads maintained by the park are Niangombi Falls, Nyamuziwa Falls, Mount Niangani and the two largest archaeological sites, Niangwe Fort and Chawumara Fort. This area also includes the main recreational facilities, such as the five dams stocked for fly fishing and the Pony Trails office. Southern area Administered from the Pungwe Drift substation, this region is less developed, with roads only along the edges. Access from the park headquarters is via the Scenic Road, a gravel road that runs parallel to the Nianga to Mutare Highway. The Pungwe Drift substation and lodges are at the end of a steep dust road, off the Sasenic Road. The Pungwe View, from which the Pungwe Falls and Pungwe Gorge can be seen, is on the edge of the scenic road. Further south is Mutarazi Falls, the highest waterfall in Zimbabwe, which can also be accessed by most vehicles. Access to the beautiful Tombaratedza Falls requires four-wheel drive and the dense Pungwe Gorge rainforest can only be accessed on foot. There is a four-wheel drive track that links the Pungwe Drift to Mount Niangani, through the Nyazengu area. Eastern area The land east of Mount Niangani was added to the park in the late 1990s and is administered from the Donhara substation on the former Inyanga Block estate. The area comprises the eastern slopes of Mount Niangani, Little Niangani and Mataka Mountains and the Kaerezi and Nyama Valleys. Much of the lower lying ground is forested with pine and blue gum. Access by road is from Mount Niangani along the Glen Eagles Road or from Troutbeck via Nyafuru. This requires special permission from park headquarters, as the roads are gated. Tourism Access There are tarred roads from Mutare and Rusape to Nianga village. The main road to Nianga town passes through the park shortly after Juliasdale. Game viewing Although there are no game viewing hides and Nianga is not primarily a game park, there is a variety of wildlife to be seen, especially in the central and western parts of the park. Hiking There are numerous hiking paths leading to most of the waterfalls and many of the ruins, and along the rivers and mountains in the park. The scenic beauty of many of the roads and tracks also makes these attractive for hiking. The main route up Mount Niangani is an exhilarating hike, and has views across the park, much of Nianga district and further into Mozambique. Horse riding Short horse riding trails are available around Nyongwe Fort, the Experimental Fruit Station and Mare Dam, as well as longer trails into Warrendale, beyond Udu Dam. The trails start and end at the Pony Trails office, on the gravel road from the park headquarters to Mare Dam. Fly fishing The five dams and the Kaerezi, Mare, Nyamuziwa, Niangombi and Pungwe rivers are stocked with rainbow trout. Brown trout and brook trout are to be found in Lake Gulliver and Purden Dam only. The park entrance fee includes a fishing license, valid for all waters open to fishing, except for Lake Gulliver and Purden Dam, for which a separate license is available. Fishing is restricted to certain times of year. Swimming. River in the park are free of Bilharzia, unlike the rest of Zimbabwe. There is a natural swimming pool on the Niangombi River, near the park headquarters, and a swimming weir on the Udu River below Udu Dam. Boating 
The park's five dams are all suitable for boating and boats are available for hire at Rhodes, Mare and UDU dams. See also Mutarazi Falls Nianga Village Mount Niangani Gallery <laughs>